Welcome back to the 101 sessions with Kogo Muscari and I'm your host Kogo M. Give me guys tips, lessons and teachings on everything spirituality, right? So today we're going to talk about water initiation and like I said before, the number on the top is for consultation bookings only. If you do have questions, please leave them on the comment section um, and I will be more than happy to um, answer you if I do have the answer. Or make a video about it when I do get the chance. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me. And yeah, let's get into it. Um, we're going to talk about water initiation. Which is something that a lot of people have been asking me about. And I will only be giving you guys a brief summary. Because certain things I feel like are very sacred in the spiritual world. And I personally do not want to dabble into sacred things unnecessarily. So because I, I don't want to be punished, you know. So anyways, what is water initiation, right? This is a spiritual path whereby a spiritually gifted person is taken by their ancestors or water spirits into the river to undergo Sangoma initiation, right? This person is often taken for months or years and then they return, right? So this is something that happens. You're taken and then you're brought back, but only if you are spiritually gifted. That is the main thing. You have to be spiritually gifted for this to happen to you. It's usually common amongst people who refuse to accept their calling or are governed by independent water spirits. So there are certain ancestors by law they are independent. I've spoken about them. And then there are people by law they have a spiritual gift but they are running away from it. And this is where as places like River oceans lakes are very dangerous for them because their ancestors can take them but when you are taken forcefully it can be a bit risky because coming back is a bit difficult but we will get into that right utmost danger is some people or it is the utmost danger is some people may not return depending on how upset their ancestors are right and this is when you are taken forcefully because you are refusing your initiation or rather you're refusing your spiritual path right and in some cases whereas you're resisting one may die right so when you're resisting to be taken by your ancestors you try to fight it then you will actually be unalived in a sense so the ancestors are very dangerous the spirits are very dangerous and sometimes it also depends on the river that you are at certain rivers have very dangerous spirits governing them so hence that is where as you will be taken and not brought back and also even if you have appeased your ancestors but you go into sacred rivers whereas which you you are not clean you've been intimate you're on your periods like there are things on your body that are not like you're not clean on your body then you can also be taken and that may result in you not coming back ever again right and being water initiation has become quite uncommon over the years right and the reason why it's been very quite uncommon is because of the contamination of spiritual areas or spiritual rivers and unnecessary exposure of spiritual african secrets right and thus most people now have to initiate via their dreams and their visions and this is actually a downside for people that have to initiate in the water because given the fact that there's so much unnecessary exposure to african spirituality and so much um contamination of the spiritual rivers certain ancestors will not take you because it will not work properly because certain rivers like certain people are called into specific rivers not every river is for your ancestors right and lorna on top of it given the fact that you know things have been modernized modernized a lot this is where as a lot of people with a lot of independent spirits they find themselves initiating through dreams and visions and this initiation can happen on a day-to-day -day basis whereas you have dreams whereas you are going through certain rituals and over time you are taught herbs you're taught muti and all that but bear in mind i'm not talking about being like a trip i'm talking about other spirits here right so when that is the case then you will not be taken into the river which i feel like it makes things a bit difficult because dreaming like dream initiation take a lot longer than water initiations right so you might find yourself spending years initiating as opposed to just a couple of months and then coming back right but let's move from that right so what are the signs that you will or you are supposed to initiate in the water right so there are multiple signs the first thing is that you're being told through your dreams and your visions this is where as your dreams and your visions come with details about the ancestors that want you to initiate in the water and also which river or which particular water spiritual waters you're supposed to go to in order to actually initiate that right 
and I have spoken about it before and I did mention that you'll be told the river, the time and the day in which you need to go to this particular river. But this is a very sacred thing. So one thing that people do to actually disturb this ritual or disturb this pathway is the fact that they tend to share they overshare they tell people that are not supposed to know or just tell people generally so right when you are told that this is your path and you have to do it at this particular moment time and place you know you're supposed to keep it to yourself go to that particular area the way that you are guided and do what you're told in the way that you're guided you're to do what you're told in order for it to be successful the minute you share it the ancestors will take a step back because you've already exposed them to people that are not supposed to know so most of the times the ancestors that want to initiate a person in the river are actually what we call they keep secrecy they don't want their business to be all over the place but nope we talk too much that person and i talk too much so <laughs> yeah that's the downside of it right number two seeing yourself initiate underwater so a lot of people prior to being told that they have to do this they'll have dreams and visions whereas they are seeing themselves underwater initiating sometimes while other times they're just under the water doing certain things under the water seeing certain people seeing certain ancestors seeing certain um spirits in the water right that is also a telltale cell a telltale sign to say that you might be in you might be supposed to or you will have to go through this procedure right but it doesn't necessarily like seal the deal né? the main thing that seals the deal is the dream or the vision that actually tells you now it's time this is where you go and this is what you're gonna do prior to entering this particular river right number three seeing yourself breathing underwater so this is going to be another form of dream that you'll have whereas you're in the water and you are breathing it's like breathing air you're just there like you're a mermaid or something like that right number four feeling weak and tired whenever you're near spiritual river so this is actually a very dangerous sign now when it happens because a lot of people experience this and you'd find that sometimes they'll experience this to a point where as they could actually fall into the river and that is a very dangerous thing that could happen because you could be taken and not come back but whenever you feel yourself becoming weak and drained and tired when you're next to spiritual rivers that is a telltale sign to say that you might be called by certain spirits into the river and when they are calling you they weaken you to a point whereas you might get weak you might fall and you'll be taken right um so you know it's not a bad thing all in all it's just that thing out in <clears throat> When it does happen, you need to make sure that you start doing things according to how your ancestors want you to do them. That way you're not taking the men or you're just taken forcefully. So let it be something a lot when you're taken, you're taken at your own free will when you're supposed to be. Number five often being guided as to which river is your ancestor so like i said every ancestor has their own specific river yeah? for instance lena there are specific rivers that i go to and there are rivers that i do not go to they're not my ancestors rivers yeah? and you'd find that certain rivers that i don't go to the reason why my ancestors don't work there is because certain um spiritual work dark spiritual work is done there right so you'd find that your ancestors are very upfront with you about which rivers are for you and which rivers are not for you which spiritual places are for you and which spiritual places are not for you and which spiritual entities are for you and which ones are not for you like i said every spiritual river is governed and guided and protected by a specific entity like river spirit right so certain river spirits they not they do not correlate with your ancestors right that is why you'd find that certain people would say that this particular mountain or this particular river is very dangerous not go there but your ancestors are sending you there right that is because that spirit will not harm you because you are a descendant of the ancestors that worked with that river that worked with that spirit at a particular point in time meaning that that is the river for your ancestors so you will be guided because there are certain people by long run, they don't know which rivers are for their ancestors and bear in mind not everyone who initiates underwater is given that um information right but generally so as spiritual people we are given that information but not everyone gets it right so it's very important to actually find out which river connects with your ancestors most which river evokes your ancestors best and which river you're supposed to constantly go to to cleanse yourself to connect with your ancestors on a regular basis to <laughs> and 
Number six is being able to communicate with marine spirits physically and spiritually. So when I'm talking about physically, this is where as you go to rivers, right? And you are you constantly attract the creatures that are there and you constantly understand what they are trying to say to you. I know this is weird. This sounds like a Disney movie type of thing, but it's not. Like certain people can connect and understand marine spirits when they speak to them and marine creatures when they speak to them, right? And other times when it's not physically, you'd find that you're in an area where as you don't have access to rivers and whatnot so you do it in a more spiritual manner né? and in a spiritual manner this is where as you'd have dreams you'd have visions where you see this marine spirits right and sometimes they don't speak to you verbally but you understand what they want from you from just seeing them through your visions and through your dreams right so this could also be a sign because you have um, mandawe spirits and they don't necessarily need you to initiate underwater but when you ask someone who has to initiate underwater then you will be able to understand what it is that they are saying to you and why it is that they want from you. You'll be able to understand why it is that you need to do for them, right? It's also a very important sign to look into when you suspect that maybe you are someone who has to do certain spiritual work in the rivers or in spiritual waters or under spiritual waters because we all know there are lands there, but that's not something we're going to talk about. Okay, number seven. I think it's number seven. No one is able to initiate you. So this is very important. People that are supposed to be initiated by their ancestors cannot be initiated by somebody else. They cannot be initiated by a gobella, right? Your ancestors are your gobella, right? Like, so this is something that I need to reiterate over and over again, just so you guys understand. Understand the type of ancestors you have and the type of spiritual path you're supposed to take in order to do the right, to make the right choices for yourself. When you're supposed to be initiated underwater, you cannot be initiated by anybody else unless you have other ancestors that require that but Logan, it will be very specific to say that yes you have these ancestors that need you to have a gobella but you will only go to a gobella to appease these ancestors and when you're done with them that is where as you will appease your other ancestors by Logan, they do not want a gobella and no gobella will ever be able to tell you what to do when to do it and how to do it strictly your ancestors are the ones that will guide you and when they guide you you will know they will be very straightforward. That is how you will know. They are very straightforward. Ancestors, this one's name. Number, I think it's number eight. Healers cannot connect with your guides through consultation. So you find that there are certain people, don't worry. you have all these ancestral signs, you see spiritual things happening, but whenever you go and consult, whenever you speak to healers, somehow they cannot see what's going on in your life, right? That is why you find people coming through and saying, well, okay, go, I've been consulting. This type of information doesn't come out. This type of information doesn't come out. The reason why, the reason why your things are not being brought up is because your ancestors are hiding you from the eyes of your mortals, okay? So they are actually trying to keep the secret of your ancestral gifts and your ancestral journey okay so don't let it stress you out this is where as you need to get guidance from your ancestors and basically when you do go and consult try to figure out how exactly is it that you have to connect with your ancestors to get the proper information from them okay um then i want to talk about how you are taken <laughs> I hope I don't get in trouble for this. Okay, <laughs> the first sign is that the first thing, no thing I noted down is that you are informed to go to the river, right? Like I said, you are given a day, a time, a place. You are informed that you need to go to this particular place. This is where as will take you. This is where as everything will happen. It's straight to the point. You are informed on everything on how you need to do it, right? Number two. At the river, you're also told what rituals you need to perform. So sometimes you don't just go there and voila, magic happens, you're taken. Other times you're told that when you get there, you need to do this ritual. Maybe you need to start or something. Maybe you need to burn something, right? Your ancestors will guide you on the rituals that are done before they can take you so you can have a safe passage through the spiritual underwater realm that you're supposed to go into. Number three, you are taken during a case of a thunderstorm or mamogashua theater, right? So mamogashua is singayamba, mermaid, those type of things, right? <clears throat> so during the case of a thunderstorm, you know that sometimes things can be taken, people can be taken, and someone is taken by them, you're thinking, oh, sheesh, this person's gone. But in reality, this person was taken by the ancestors, the river spirits that were passing by because... They have to appease the ancestors. They have duties spiritually. And sometimes even the thunderstorm isn't even that serious. Not even like Mama Asha or anything. Like this person will literally be dreaming. And they'll just see them, like feel themselves being taken by these very 
very strong wind right and sometimes the like most people they fight this thing right but if you don't fight it that is where as they're taking you and you might not come back so yeah it's a good thing that you guys are fighting it number four you when near a river you are pulled in forcefully this is where as you could go there swimming you could go there fishing but for some reason something just pulls you and you could be there with a lot of people but you're the only one that is taken or rather some other people that are taken their bodies can be found dead or alive but yours is nowhere to be found that is a clear a telltale sign that you were taken by your ancestors but the issue is that when you're taken forcefully like i said chances of you coming back are very very slim you might not come back or you might come back unalive so always make sure that if you have these ancestors and you're very much above it avoid rivers avoid lakes avoid oceans i'm not even going to say what avoid the spiritual ones i'm just going to say avoid all of them because rivers ocean lakes it doesn't matter if there's a spirit there but just there are spirits everywhere and rivers oceans lakes dams those are spiritual places the water is a very powerful spiritual area and if you just play around them whereas you have this type of ancestors you're putting your life and yourself at massive risk right only if you have those ancestors by lord um i don't know how to put this in english but they they are very sensitive they very nurturing then that is where as they will protect you and say what well, you are not going to get harmed but you'll constantly keep feeling yourself being pulled i remember this other time this person came through and told me a story about their lives whereas they were playing in the river and something kept pulling them and only when they stopped fighting then whatever it is it stopped right there there were so many contexts to that story however i never managed to share it because it was a very long story and at some point i lost all the details but like it's actually one of those stories that actually like back up what i'm trying to say here right when you fight your when you fight the spirits that is where as they become more aggressive but when you are very calm with them then they will be very gentle with you here and there unless if maybe you've already pushed them to the edge right and something that i noted down which is very important is that usually taken ones are accompanied by ancestors during their initiation in a form of the end of an animal or a totem right so when you're taking you're not going to be there alone most of the times you will be with one of your ancestors who will also guide you through everything while the other spirits are initiating you right um another thing is how you return so it's very important to know what how you're going to return if you're taken right or if you're told that you need to go to a particular place and initiate the how is it that you're gonna be taken right so before i get into this i remember <laughs> this story i was once told um back in the old days it's like a very long time ago like around the time where i was even like starting with appeasing my ancestors and whatnot so this gentleman was telling me about um a person who was taken and this person was just taken like their family didn't know nothing right and automatically apparently and a letter just appeared out of nowhere and it had the details and the dates of where they have to find this person in this particular like like it was after like six months they were like you'll find this person in this particular river at this time and apparently the family went there they waited for hours nothing happened and then they started playing drums and after hours that is where as the person emerged from the river so i don't know how true that story is but apparently the ancestors can magically send letters to your family okay let me stop saying it up. <laughs> but that is something that i've actually really heard i'm not like i've actually heard that right so going back to how you return <laughs> some people they just come back spontaneously like when they are done with their initiation in the river they come back they walk out of there like they were taking a stroll like nothing big happened right well others there has to be a ritual name this is a drum ritual whereas it is performed by healers asking the ancestors and the spirits of the rivers to return you right so this in most cases this is where as some people they can be told when exactly you have to return whereas they consult them the person who's consulting your family can say well on this particular day this ritual has to be done in this particular river for you to return other times way longer this person has been taken we've heard stories about people that are taken by rivers and whatnot and healers would go there play drums and whatnot so this person can come back yes sometimes they come back and alive but other time they come back well and alive and good right so that is actually one of the other ways in which you can return so it's either one of these two right 
that I don't know of any in between, but it mainly depends on your ancestors and how it is that they want you, you want your things to be done, right? But most of the times you find that a lot of people, their drums are have to be played for them to come back. And when they do come back, they come back with immense spiritual knowledge. Like, oh, the knowledge those people have. If I could just... Oh. I'll be the happiest woman alive. Anyways, they come back with immense spiritual knowledge that is untouchable. Okay, I'm not gonna like say it's untouchable because you know I've only met a couple of people that have went through that and I've liked what they knew. I've loved it. I love picking people's brains. That's the thing about me. Like the minute you have something like interesting to feed me like i am the happiest person alive in that moment that is my issue i need <laughs> i need to chill okay and also what is it that you usually come back with so what people come back with when they've initiated underwater it slowly depends on your ancestors right it slowly depends on your ancestors no two people come back with the same thing right your ancestors choose like the same way i always tell people that spirituality is not a one shoe fits all this particular information like this part of the information actually goes into that spirituality is what a one shoe fits all so you can come with different things man. first thing can come with advanced spiritual knowledge that should never be shared so there's so many things that happen down there that those people are not supposed to share with us and it's understandable it's sacred is that things that their ancestors wanted them to know so they can do the work that their ancestors have put them in this world to do the right way, right? So this immense knowledge is something you, know, you have to carry with you up until the end of your days, right? Secondly, true knowledge of creation. So with creation, we only have bits and parts of it. Some from the Bible, some from our visions. Yo, guys, I think, okay, we'll talk about it later. Some from our visions, some from the Bible. Like there's so many things that we hear about creation, but most of the times the people that initiate in the river, they are told the truth about initiation, spirituality, creation, everything in details. They have that knowledge, which is, yo, guys, that is something that I would love to have, ne? Number three, some return with mutis and herbs, right? So this is where as there are certain river mutis, like muti that is only found in the river and that can only be used by select few people, right? So some people, they come back from the river with those type of mutis, with those types of herbs, and they are guided as to how to use them because obviously through the time where they were under that place, they were being taught how to use certain things, right? So they come back with the things that they were taught there, right? And others come back with a familiar. So I'm going to call the familiar for the sake of this video. But a familiar, I'm actually talking about a marine spirit or creature, right? So it's not, I'm not talking about the ones that people get for Twala and all those other dark spiritual work. That is not what I'm on about, Triane. I'm talking about people that have certain ancestors, right? And those ancestors actually give them a creature to come back with. It could be a snail. It could be a fish. It could be... A snake it could be anything but it has to be a marine creature right that actually walks with them guides them protects them speaks to them and most of the times they're the only ones that can see this particular thing or well, other times other people can see it but it's very rare for that to happen so they come back with a familiar name other times the people come back they come back with their bones with their defined bones with everything that they need to have they come back with certain clocks they sometimes come back with um sticks yeah? so what you come back with is highly dependent on your ancestors your type of spiritual gift because there are certain water spiritual gifts that are prophetic there are others that are traditional so depending on what it is that you're initiating for is what it is that you'll come back with and other people they come back with nothing but with the ones that come back with nothing, I want to get into details about this, even though I didn't write it down, right? Um, but one thing, you know, I do know in regards to people that come back with nothing, they don't necessarily come back with nothing, right? They will come back with the knowledge and whatnot, but you'd find a person come back with knowledge, but not the herbs. And those people, you find that they don't just finish there in the river, right? They will initiate partly in the river. And then after initiating the river, they come out of the river on their own and they're guided to actually go to a particular place in the woods. Somewhere more longer, people cannot really find them, right? They'll find a hut or a particular place and then they'll stay there and practice certain things with the guidance of their spiritual guides and their ancestors through visions, um, spiritual sight and whatnot. And then when they go back home, you find that they have 
all the skills the herbal skills the herbal knowledge and they will come back with the herbs and muti that came from the particular woods where as they were at right and most of the times in that particular area you'd find that there are bees or rather any type of ancestrally significant creature right and even the fact that it's in the woods you find that it's a creature yeah, longer it's not a marine creature it's not a fish or anything like that it could be some like bees some like a wildcat like a mage right you know those creatures they know what they represent the ancestors right but that is as far as i can go in regards to this topic because if i continue this video i'm going to talk too much and yeah like i said there are certain things that i do not want to touch up into because of the fact that certain things are very sacred and that is one thing that i do not want to invade on right in terms of spirituality but anyways i think yeah that is it i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys um have clarity especially for the people that have been very curious about this water initiation on what really happens what are the details about it that is the summary of what really happens there anyways thank you guys for joining me i hope you guys have a beautiful one to the bye bye <laughs> Mas hoje a coluna não é